Thanks, Henry. Um, we are now going to take questions from the audience. I've noticed a shift lately from everything or everyone wanting everything real time to what I call reality time, which means that if you actually look at, let's say, Facebook, for instance, you'll notice they have a wait screen now. Like it used to be everything was instant. Now they have a wait screen. Gmail did the exact same thing. We have applications at our firm where there are millions literally millions of transactions and we've been like working really hard to for those to be displayed in a faster way but i'm wondering if since you're in the caching space have you done any research or come across any research as to what clients will actually and end user clients are willing to actually wait for versus what they actually demand sub millisecond latency Right, and so there's been many studies, like especially in the retail space, where they've, you know, many studies have said that if it's more than a second, or more than a second or two seconds, that they're going to go move to a competitor. So that's kind of in the retail space. I think um, clients and the customers that we talk to, um, you know, their customers, especially like if you're in the retail banking space in particular, uh, and I can probably attest to that as a, as a customer myself that really we're talking about, you know, they really expect to see something in the 100 millisecond space, um, 100 milliseconds to, you know, you know, something in that range. And so that's why we kind of predicated on the fact that if you can't get the data in significantly less time than the overall 100 milliseconds, and typically we talk, think about it in terms of as 50 milliseconds from the user requesting whatever that transaction or request is, reaching to that backend application server and for the application server to respond back, you know, something in the order of 100 milliseconds is what the expectation is. And so the whole premise of Redis obviously starting out as a cache and now as a full data platform is the ability that, that you have as an in-memory technology to be able to provide that data in milliseconds, in some cases sub-millisecond, so that we don't, you're basically not the obstacle to that application response back to the end user client. So I hope, did that answer your question? Yeah. So again, I, I, I haven't heard about the Facebook wait, but honestly, if I'm waiting, that does not exactly give me the warm fuzzies <laughs> if I see a wait screen that says, hey, wait until we do something. So it makes me wonder what's going on in the back end. At least that's my kind of personal uh, view of it. But good question. Do you have any other questions in the room? Got one more for you here, sure. Henry. Sure. So if we're migrating to microservices and we're deploying into the cloud, mm -hmm. how can your platform help with that application modernization? Oh, that's a great question. So as I mentioned, um, Redis um, is uh, born, it was natively designed for the cloud. So we you know, start out as a database managed service in the cloud. And now we also have obviously software that's on-prem as well. So that obviously fits into the overall trend to use um, some of the big uh, data platforms in the cloud. Um, there may be some external data that your application needs. So running in the cloud and having Redis manage that is ideally suited to um, companies moving to the cloud. And then as I mentioned earlier in my previous slide, uh, with microservices, the need to stay isolated, right, within your bounded context, but yet, some, and some services that need to share data. Um, with our multi-tenancy support, the ability to have one data platform, but yet still have isolated uh, data for each of the different services is to us uh, ideally uh, matching with what the premise and the benefits of microservices are. So that's how we fit in. Fantastic. Yeah. Any other questions in the room or online? We have time for one more. So um, I do have another one. Okay. Can you explain how we would use Redis in the, um, in the use case that you reviewed besides basic caching? All right, yeah. So for those of you that are very familiar with Redis, obviously we were uh, built on open source Redis, which is known for its caching um, as a key value data store really, really fast because it's in memory. But we've expanded to support multiple data models uh, we can do search in real time, which is a key use case um, for a lot of our customers. 
Uh, and they don't necessarily think of Redis in the search terms, but when you think about caching and a real-time data store, the ability to index and query based on multiple fields, be, you know, doing things like autocomplete and fuzzy matching, all those things, um, again, tied to the customer experience. So again, in a you know, typical uh, retail-facing uh, type application where you're searching for something, you want to be able to find that item, right? In the case of financial service, maybe you're searching for the best I don't know, credit card rates or you're searching for what the loan um, details are or something you're searching where you need to have some kind of information really fast. So one of the key things that customers have started using us for, again, is to be able to get that fast search. Because once you have the data in Redis, why not search and, and do that search, which is built into the Redis stack already, um, where you don't have to necessarily deploy another search solution like an Elasticsearch, uh, right? Because you're able to already do all that indexing again in real time. 